I think uh, we shouldn't waste any time and get shouldn't right. To waste it. any time? Yeah, this is yeah. This yeah. is uh, <laughs> this, that is that what everyone says before they record a podcast? Let's yeah. not waste any time. <laughs> I, every podcast I've ever listened to really sounded like a whole bunch of people <laughs> in a room, just really, really not interested in not wasting any time. <laughs> So let's, uh, yeah. let's uh, real, real good words of encouragement. I don't want a lot of podcasts. Most of them are all the same. All the hosts just go off topic. When they should be talking games Round up all the girls and boys With an awful buzzing noise Give me one that hits All I want is insert credit I was good. I'm Alex Jaffe And I've never tried eggnog And I never will Because part of me is concerned I might like it too much Wow uh, I'm Frank Cifaldi, and I'm supposed to follow this up with a Christmas-themed something, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's it's like our that. holiday episode, baby. I'm Frank Cifaldi, and this is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son okay. of David, the son of Abraham. <laughs> Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, okay, whose lost. mother That's was Perez. Tamar. Now, mm -hmm. Perez, the father of Hezron. Yeah. And Hezron, now see, was the father of Ram. Yeah, this is all in Genesis. Like he, his Ram. name was actually Ram. And mm -hmm. Ram was the name. father of uh, Aminadab. I don't know Aminadab. And Aminadab, the father of uh, Nashon. And Nashon, the father of Salmon, the fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's where it comes from. Yeah. I love them fish. Yeah. It's a Merry Good Christmas. Good to know. Oh, and that's why Jesus is able to produce fish, because it's from his family. Right. He has salmon uh, in his genes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, I'm Tim Rogers, and uh, I don't really like – I don't care about Christmas. I was raised by devoutly Catholic parents, and uh, we went to church all the time. Oh. I, ne I never liked it and never really had a good Christmas and never really decided to start as an adult. And I've only recently decided that every year when Christmas comes around, I think, should I do something for Christmas? And then we end up doing something really hacky. So maybe this year that's it. No, this year I'm just I'm just gonna work on Christmas. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I work for myself now. So I got my dogs. You got your dogs. So every day's a little Christmas with them. Yeah, a little bit like Christmas. It's beginning to look a little bit like Christmas over here. Sometimes I pretend I like Christmas or have fond Christmas memories, but I don't. Today would be a pretty good day for that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not, well, I've decided to just not bother doing that. It's a good day to pretend. Nope. <laughs> Not gonna do that anymore. All right, not today. Okay, uh, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens. We'll see. I will admit, rocking around the Christmas tree. That's an all right song. Yeah, it's okay. that's a pretty good song. Have a happy holiday. Uh, I'm Brandon Sheffield, and I've been a big holiday curmudgeon for um, the majority of my, <laughs> of my life. Uh, but I'm trying to get over it. In that, uh, if someone invites me to a holiday event. I will go and attempt to be in the spirit of it. Um, for example, at a recent ha Halloween uh, party, I put on not a full costume, but a bit of a costume to, to ease myself in to being a thing, like a, like a real regular person. I, I, have a, I have had a resentment toward holiday seasons because they interrupt the normal flow of, say, going to the grocery store or uh, mm -hmm. driving around. Just for one day, though. Whatever. Well, no, it's, uh, it's leading up to. Is, <laughs> ah, is, you know what I mean. You yeah, know what I mean. There's, yeah. there's a, for me, it was like, I need to get some groceries. And it's like, oh, is it Thanksgiving today? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that I was sort like, of well. thing. Um, but if you had also had that thought between three and zero days beforehand, you would have had the same experience. I mean, I go to the supermarket every day, but uh, I mean, nice. maybe it's just a, I don't know. Uh, um, anyway, uh, this year we, we've we got some lights twined around a Monstera plant. Oh, very festive. Uh, so it's it's where we, we did a little bit, and I think that's enough. It I, is. I convinced everyone in my family to not give presents anymore except i give presents to my mom because she loves them <laughs> and, oh uh, who, who's this coming down the chimney it's your friend and mine lucy james that's right 
Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm Lucy James. I'm also not a big Christmas person, but I am that millennial white woman age where I have string lights hung up all the time in my apartment. So my yeah. apartment does look a little bit festive. Nice. And yeah. It's easy uh, lighting to have mm. Christmas lights. They're they're a nice- uh, They're low wattage. I've had Christmas lights up mm. in apartments year round for a period of several years. Uh, the, the only way Christmas uh, factored into that was if I needed to replace a string, I had to wait until Halloween, which mm. is when they start selling the Christmas lights <laughs> at the store. Yeah. Well, you wait till January and you get them in the sale. Yeah, there you oh, go. yeah, but it's like I needed them so badly because right. I liked yeah. them a lot. Yeah. What, what colors are your Christmas lights in your apartment? They are just uh, a subtle, warm, a warm white. Oh, oh, do they have like the sort of faceted uh, globe on them that that diffuses no. and scatters the light? No, no, not even. They're just are they, are they're they very, frosty? They're very slight. No, no, just, they're not. They're uh, not even. Not even like a frosted. No, no. I'm a disappointment of my family. Are they just <laughs> like they're just like like lights yes. with clear? Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, you take you take every element of anything that could be festive about these lights. You strip them away. These are aesthetic lights. No, no. Uh, the 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 ones that have the clearer bulb, uh, that's more festive. If you oh. get the ones that are the that have a soft frosting to them, it hmm. just turns them into really nice, like very cin- cinematographically tasteful, diffuse, soft light. Uh, that t- does not feel like Christmas. It feels uh, cinematic. So it feels try, warm. Try, try that out. Try that out <laughs> next uh, next time they're on sale. Longtime listeners of the show will know that I am Jewish, and I decided for no reason that this would be the year that I'm super into Christmas, and I'm bringing you all. Are you going to do all twelve days? I've been doing it all month. Well, no, I mean because all twelve days, it's like you think grown up with Hanukkah that yeah. you're a. Uh, you're on some kind of high horse with your your eight nights. Sure. No. Christmas in the real tradition is 12 full days. Mm. Not just the nights. It's the full day. You report for duty 12.01 a.m. on tw- December 25th, and you rock round the Christmas tree for <laughs> uh, like 12 straight days, 24-12. Into January? Yeah. That's why it's called the 12 days of Christmas. I was always under the impression that the 25th was the last of the 12 days. No, it's the first. Because no. the wow. 25th is the day that, quote unquote, Jesus Christ was, quote unquote, born. Yeah. Right? When really, you know, true uh, true scholars and academics and readers of Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code <laughs> know that he was actually <laughs> born in March. Uh, oh, sure. So, uh, but the 12 days is to, uh, is to simulate... The twelve days it took the three kings of the Orient to uh, to reach uh, the manger where baby Jesus lay. So baby Jesus is already twelve days old in that scene when his party, yeah, mm-hmm. for at his birthday party, yeah, yeah. That's disappointing. The the word of the angel of God or whatever was a lot slower than your typical emails and texts. Yeah. Uh, would be in the year. I had just our- always assumed that in that scene, Jesus was still covered with like afterbirth and placenta and all that. I've heard oh. too many priests and uh, Sunday school teachers explain this very uh, pedantically. Mm-hmm. According to the the one true Christian, uh, self proclaimed in my high school, who was LDS, uh, yeah. all of mm. us would go to hell for uh, celebrating Christmas. Oh, because- of course. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 do that. There's something a little Johnny. <laughs> foreigner about uh, telling <laughs> yeah. somebody they're going to go to heck for not <laughs> celebrating Christmas. <laughs> no, for doing it, for celebrating it. For celebrating it, that's what I yeah, mean, yeah. yeah. That's oh. what I mean. I Oh, I I, I well know the Mormon uh, approximation of Christmas, trust me. Yeah. I, I, I well know <laughs> As it. a Jewish person, I'm making sure to celebrate Christmas this year to go to uh, LDS Double Hell. Let's get into the meat of this podcast. Hey, let's not waste any time. No, certainly not. <laughs> As the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future, oh, nice. which three video game characters would be best at teaching Ebenezer Scrooge to change his miserly ways? Mm. Oh, man. Right. Oh, Carl. Christmas future is a, is a big time, big time goth weirdo. Yeah. Who <laughs> doesn't talk. So I w- initially I was thinking it should be uh, some... Tetsuya Nomura character for the goth reason, but oh. they talk a lot. They do talk a lot. Not all of them, no. You you don't know all of them, Carl. How many of the 13 can you name, Brandon? Give me some names. 
Give me some names. Uh, does like the Twelly protagonist not talk? He's not giving me any names. I mean, I could do it. Ma- uh, Marluxia? Uh, it? Yeah, Marluxia's the one with the scythe. So I think that would be the most appropriate. I think I think Mickey Mouse from Kingdom Hearts could do it. Oh, goes the uh, sure. Like uh-huh. the dark Mickey when he's got the the cloak on. He's always got the cloak on. Charles. They'll pay for this, Mickey, when yeah. Goofy gets got. Yeah. And he's no stranger to the story. He's been in the Christmas Carol before. Ghost of Christmas pa- uh, present is clearly uh, Kazuma Kiryu. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, he's Majima. He's Majima. Oh, Sorry. that's even I better. I changed yeah. it. Because mm-hmm. he's, he's taking him around and showing him, uh, mm-hmm. you know. And just laughing maniacally at him. Yeah. Yeah. I almost said Davy Crockett instead of Bob Cratchit. So, uh, <laughs> Davy Cratchit, Bob Crockett. There's got to be something Epicurean about the ghost of Christmas. Can you Christmas. imagine if your name was Bob Crockett, <laughs> inventor of the rocket? No. I, I actually can't. think it's a hard time. I, I can't yeah. really think of a better name to have on, like, I think just in general. That's also a small town near me. Uh, so, you could go there and, and rule Crockett. Yeah. When all else fails, Crockett. That yeah. would that could be like the slogan of your plumbing company. You could be you could be the mayor of Crockett if your name was Bob Crockett. That's for sure. Yeah, mm. just walk into town, hands on hips. Campaign writes itself. Your my middle name is Akimbo. Bob Akimbo Crockett. That would be your name. Okay, so now we got to do future, which is the jovial one. Present is the jovial one. Oh, sorry, past. past. The past. Present's past. the jovial one. That's Majima. Yeah, what's past? Yeah. Past yeah. is uh, has got to be a has got to be a goyle. Yeah, okay. it's oh, the girl. Yeah. It's, got, it's got to be a dame. The girl. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Like, what was the Ghost of Christmas past like? I'm, I'm having a hard time. What were the attributes? Kind of a fairy godmother. Oh, Ebenezer, don't you remember how nice your school was? Yeah, Oh, yeah. you liked mm-hmm. that girl, didn't you? She's Things like that. Used to Wait, be which different. Muppet was it? I don't recognize Muppets because uh, I was told I would go to heck if I celebrated <laughs> Christmas <laughs> with Muppets. It was... Um, was it the big boy? No. Because I thought the the, the silent girl was the one who showed him like uh, Tiny Tim's or his his grave or something. No, that was that was a big shroudy guy. No, I think all of the ghosts were original in that. Okay, then who's the Mickey one? What do you mean? Who's in Mickey's Christmas Carol? Who's oh, in Mickey's. Uh, I think they were all original oh. there too. It's important really? to note oh. that in Mickey's Christmas Carol, Mickey actually plays the role of Bob Crockett. That's correct. So. True. Yeah. Feeds this kid that Wait, he's Tiny Tim. The, Tiny Tim is just a like a Mickey uh, mini- clone from yeah, a Yeah, it's weird. Oh. Yeah. It's yeah. weird. They scaled Mickey down in Photoshop. Oh, have you not seen it? The, no, like, no, no. All right. Well, you know, they're so poor that they eat a bean for dinner, but like they close up on the bean and they and they and they like slice the bean like a steak, and it looks like <laughs> the best bean you've ever seen in your life. Like it just looks like the most delicious bean. Is that Christmas Carol or is that Mickey in the bean stalk? No, that's Christmas Carol. But maybe one's, one's a sequel to the other. We just watched Mickey and the Beanstalk like two weeks ago on this TV on Disney+. Plus, and that is where the famous Donald, uh, Mickey, and Goofy slicing a bean mm-hmm. scene comes from. Oh. But I would not disbelieve it also has a counterpart in Mickey's Christmas Carol. I remember Tiny Tim eating him a bean slice. I have not watched Mickey Mouse at Christmas Carol because I was told yeah. I would go straight you to heck. Mickey, if I, in yeah. Mickey's Christmas Carol... Jiminy Cricket is the ghost of Christmas past. Uh, and oh. uh, oh. Willie the Giant from Jack and the, the Jack and the Beanstalk is the ghost of Christmas present. Can I just say something? We watched we watched Pinocchio about three weeks ago in this house. We, I don't know if you noticed. Which, We've been which watching one? The original Pinocchio, but the, the Disney's Pinocchio. Um, and I, I'm going to say this with all, like, I, Jiminy Cricket's a god darn hack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In what way? Uh, he's no good at the job. He uh, so passionately purports himself uh, excited to do, fails on at every instance, gets awarded anyway, which kind of says a lot about the 1940s, uh, uh, you know, pre-war era or whatnot. And he just sucks. He's like, what is he supposed to be like a, 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 a God darn uh, Jimmy Stewart impression, but he's Jiminy Cricket. Like, yeah. what's he supposed to be? I think that's it. I think it's Jimmy Stewart. I got to watch that movie in preparation for playing Lies of P, which I have to do um, pretty soon. Oh, no, you should watch uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio on Netflix and stuff. I hear that's good. You should watch the Paulie Shaw Pinocchio, which also came out yeah, last okay, year. Yeah, okay, now we're talking. What about the Roberto Benigni Pinocchio? <laughs> Uh, we got 30 seconds left, so I'm going to say what everybody's thinking, uh, Navi from Zelda. All yeah, right. I was thinking, like, some lawgiver. I, sh- I just shared the uh, the Ghost of Christmas past from the Muppet Christmas in the in the chat here, and a uh, lot more terrifying than I recall, actually. Yeah. Oh, Can yeah. we just settle this once and for all? Are Muppets uh, 
Never mind. Never mind. I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna <laughs> ask the question. <laughs> That's time I wanna, anyway. I'm mean, gonna get too much hate mail for asking this question about Muppets. Uh, yeah, let's let's not broach the topic of uh, whether Muppets are anything, whatever it is they yeah, are. You yeah, don't want yeah, that exactly. heat in your. And the answer is almost certainly yes. By the way, <laughs> uh, so uh, hit me with your uh, your autofill suggestions. Question two: Does sliding ice physics ever positively contribute to a video game? Oh yeah, anytime it's in Mario. Um, that's not in 3D. Any 2D Mario, uh, I think the ice is always really nice. Super Mario Brothers 3, the ice is really exciting. Really? Yeah, it's neat. I think it's exciting. It, it makes the... Maybe it's because the levels are so, so short that it adds kind of a frenetic pace to it. Somewhat short, uh, but there's a lot of them. World 6 is pretty uh, pretty big and complicated. But they also yeah. don't overstay their welcome in, right. in Mario games. Like they're, they're used sparingly and and in the service of fun. Yeah, they're just they're fun little levels. And you, you sometimes get through one and wish you could play it again, which in Super Mario 3 you can't. So I guess that's also part of it. Yeah, it never gives you the space to go, oh, this again? I think new Super Mario Brothers U for the, for the Wii U had really good ice levels as well and i think super mario bros super mario bros wander or whatever it's called super mario bros wander also has good ice levels i haven't enjoyed them myself uh it hasn't really worked for me the 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 slippy slidey i understand the that it can work but i have generally not been pleased Mm. Crash Bandicoot 2, though, when you, because you always got to ride on the polar bears on those levels. Hmm. That's that's something. It allows you to ride on a polar bear. But then you jump on his head. Is Crash Bandicoot good? <laughs> well, you can't uh, put a question inside a question like yeah, that. Yeah, what's this inception? I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> I've, I've tried it. Crash Bandicoot's okay. It's, uh, it's all right. It's, uh, it didn't hit for me. It's a product of its time. I think yeah. it was really interesting at its time. It was the platform game that was out on the PlayStation when the PlayStation came out, and it was graphically impressive at its mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. If you play it on a Mister through a Retro Tank 4K right now, which strangely I did yesterday for some reason, oh. it looks pretty good still. Mm. Uh, it's it's a good looking video game. The last time I played it was in Uncharted Four. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they remade you play the, it for like the the one the, the one World little scene the boulder right? level. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it was just kind of it was kind of weird. Well, no, there, there's a bit where uh, spoilers. Nathan Drake's daughter mm-hmm. plays it because Nathan he, Drake plays it with his wife. Oh, they're, that's right. They're sitting on the sofa, or it's like the first chapter of the that's game. Right, that's it's, right. That's right. Very early. That's right. What does his daughter play? Does she play that's, something? Well, well, they have a daughter. The daughter is born, and then the game skips uh, 18 years into the yeah. future at the end, where you play as his daughter on their, yeah, their, l- looking for their resort home. So look, I just spoiled it way more. <laughs> it's been like eight years. It's fine. <laughs> is it eight years? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's been eight years since that game came out. God, is yeah. it actually? I, th- I just made that up. Yeah, 2016? Yeah, it's been almost eight years. Yeah. yeah. Naughty Dog has made, has made one video game since then. Three times. And they made it to they've remade no they've actually remade the last of us four more times today so i just noticed that before the podcast so (laughs) yeah it's doubling every half hour you know the last of us part two remaster for playstation 5 is only ten dollars if you own the original i just uh i keep seeing people tweeting about how audacious and disgusting it is that they're remastering that game quote unquote already which was three years ago they remastered the first one less than a year mm. after it came out. Very important to note that less than a year after the first Last of Us came out, they had remastered it and resold it for PS4. It's been three years since Last of Us 2, and they're only charging you $10 for the remaster for PS4. How are, how are the uh, Last of Us 2 not so uh, bad. ice levels? Ice so. physics. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, they're okay. Uh, nice. Well, they're actually, there, there is some ice. But there's not really any ice physics. Some, definitely some snow. I don't know if you slip on it, though. Anyway, the reason Brandon doesn't like ice uh, physics in games is because he just might not have played ones where uh, it, god darn master craftsman level designers actually meaningfully implement it the way it is done in, you know, Super Mario. I hate to, mm. you know, I hate to toot the horn for Super Mario, new Super Mario Bros. U. It's like, what do you put two god darn qualifiers on the name of your game for? Uh <laughs> But it's uh, a yeah, street fighter. It's meaning it's meaningfully designed. It's like if you're coming from if you're coming from a a, a, a Turbo Graphics and Sega Genesis household uh, where they just wouldn't stop getting the idea to make Sonic underwater. Oh, what if players love underwater? Right. Ice levels got very unfairly 
uh, they got a bad rap from there just being way too many of them that weren't good. They're just not designed thoughtfully. That's certainly true. What about that bit in like that X Men game where you played as Iceman? Actually, yeah, that and that you was had to make a little pass. That was a good ice mechanic, certainly. That was cool. Wait, which game was that? It was the one that came out in between X Men Two and Three, and it's the game that they wrote Nightcrawler out of the movies in because Alan Cummings wasn't coming back for X-Men 3. Got but you it. could I don't know if we're talking about the same one, but there was one where you could build you could build paths with your yes. with your ice. You played as Nightcrawler. Mm. That was pretty nice. Iceman 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 Iceman. <laughs> uh, Iceman. <laughs> Lee Iceman uh, and Wolverine. Oh. All right. It sounds good. It was I didn't cool. I didn't know there were like fun X-Men. Oh, that's time. I mean, hey, that was like 2003, so. Well, hey, there's going to be another one in 2030 probably. It's going to be pretty good oh. around then. Or, or somewhere around then it's going to be. Let's not a, go down that path of whether we should <laughs> talk about that, Let's please. Let's not go into the discourse, please. <laughs> <laughs> All this right. was safe. I want to I wanna slip in really quick that I, I like when there's puzzle games where there's deterministic ice, where ice is something where it's like if you touch it, you slide all the way to the other side. Kick oh, a yeah. cubicle, dude. Yeah, kick kick a cubicle, cubicle. Exactly kickle the one I was cubicle. thinking of. Kickle uh, But also, also um, chip, chips, Kickle Cubicle and Chips Challenge do something. Similar. Oh, Chips Challenge. Yeah. I just, I just, I just kept talking about new Super Mario Bros. U. <laughs> we could have been talking about Kickle Cubicle. Kickle, and- well, no, I had Kickle Cubicle in the back of my mind. I kept wanting to say it, so I'm glad you. Uh, I'm, glad I'm glad you got, got it got in there. It. Uh, I've got a little game for us. Um, oh, no. This is sounds like a hypothetical, but I was actually able to find this out by poking around. What do you think are the best-selling non-video game items at GameStop as a gift this season? Ooh. Oh, it's going to be this Funko Pops season. or something. I have the top five. Uh, Loki from Thor Ragnarok, a Funko Pop. Uh, actually, one. no Funko Pops on the list. What? Okay. Nice. That's actually, I'm glad that that's true. Yeah. Do they yeah. do they sell plushes there? Because I know that those are big at other non-GameStop game they stores They do right sell now. plushes. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to say that's one of them. GameStop has like the world's worst uh, selection of energy drinks in a tiny refrigerator on the countertop. I'm thinking New York GameStop, which I believe is very, very different from GameStop everywhere else, right? I do not think they're the same here as they are elsewhere, which is, uh, you know, I don't want to go down too dark a road. They're just, they're they're a little different. They sell weed in New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say uh, Pokemon plushes, which uh, I was I was recently in a game store where a young child was very confidently referring to them as squishies, which was clearly like one of those internal in the house kind of words that left the mm-hmm. house. You know what I mean? Give your sister back her squishy. I am going to count that. Oh, Number three on the list is the Squishmallows 20-inch Pikachu. Oh, okay, there we go. Inches. Oh, so right. yeah. Squish, there you go. You know, I'm no child psychologist, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty easy to imagine that just being called a squishy in a, 100%. a house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100%. It's pretty, pretty okay, easy. Okay, I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to make something up and see if you have something equivalent, because I think right. that's now the game. That's fair. right? <laughs> um, so I think it is a, a dress-up play set where uh you are a very bad pixel art version of uh walter white from breaking bad oh that's an inter that's a very interesting guess but i don't think there's anything equivalent to that it's like minecraft breaking bad man how's how long is it going to be before we get like super mario brothers tequila like there's like actual mario super mario brothers branded tequila When's mm-hmm. that going to happen? Well, I don't know, but so something that I do. Because you know that the Breaking Bad guys did a tequila thing. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. Oh, they did that. They did that. Yeah. Or mezcal. Was it mezcal? I, I'm, not a, I'm not a hard liquor expert. So whatever that, that GDC was with all the, the, the uh, blockchain nonsense, I don't know, two GDCs ago, I guess. Yeah. We went around and collected all of the, uh, all of the crap. And um, yeah. something that I, I'm, I'm proud of having gotten was we went to one booth and these guys were like, we made the first weed strain tie-in to a video game, like the official weed for a game. Wow. That's good. Uh, that's um, good. It was good. The, for their own game. It was like, that's oh, really okay. interesting. That's and, and they had a bunch of empty bottles out. And I was like, do you have any unused labels? And he was confused for a second, but he's like, yes. And <laughs> and so we have unused labels uh, for the first official weed strain for a video game. What oh, a coup good. for the I video game that. history. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. What was the video game? Was it some I some gotcha MOBA thing? Probably. I have no idea. 
Was it like weed dealer simulator? Because that exists, right? It had nothing to do with weed. What? I can go grab it if we really want to know. Or was it know exactly Jay and Silent it Bob? It had nothing to do with weed, I'm telling you. Oh, Jay, right. Jay and Silent Bob. Dude. Well, that's why I'm guessing it was some gotcha. It was some gotcha okay. MOBA. Continue answering the question, and I'm going to I'm gonna go figure out what this was, because it's okay. right there. Right yeah, back. all right. Okay, uh, for, Fortnite gift card. Nothing Fortnite made the top oh. five this year. Oh, wow. there's a lot. they sell a lot of Minecraft stuff. Nothing Minecraft made the top really? five. Really? What the hell are people buying over Okay, I'm going to say Sonic. What what Sonic? Sonic Uh, Chronic the Hedgehog weed gummies. Is that on there? (laughs) Uh, Nope. No Sonic related items made the top five. Halo Nerf guns. Uh, No Halo. Weed gummies at all? No. I don't even know what they sell in there anymore. I did a sponsored video for them last year where we had to make a streaming room and I had to go to GameStop and I had to buy a bunch of- Use Elgato brand stuff? Was that what, what they was had? There? What uh, was there? Oh, you know what? They sell PCs. They have a PC builder in store now. I bought my hard drive from them. That doesn't count as non-video game. That no, we've matter. already officially ruled that the PC is a video game console okay. on this podcast. No, we have not. No, I, you, we didn't. And that was a point <laughs> of contention. I believe that it is, but you wouldn't let me call it. <laughs> no, There's a wouldn't. lot of streaming stuff. Stuff. So mics, yes. lights, uh, yeah, okay. cameras, and stuff. I counted those as directly video game okay. content. Yeah, I would, okay. I would what say what so. about what about uh, iPhones? Uh, not in the top five anyway. But I know they do sell them somewhere. They sell like refurb phones. Yeah, refurb. yeah, yeah, refurb insurance. On oh, that's a good one. Insurance. I'm just like, I mean, to be in case anyone listening to this has a local GameStop that they go to or they they've been to. And they their GameStop for some reason does not have a full wall of Funko Pops. I just want to say that in New York they that they all have a full wall of Funko Pops. I don't know how it is anywhere else. Oh no, it's the same. Oh, uh, in Florida, all of them. Don't yell at me for insinuating GameStop has Funko Pops, as I know somebody's going to do. It's just they do. They're in the pocket of big Funko. No, all, all the ones I've been to in Florida have those as well. They definitely do. Yeah. They do? Yeah. Okay, so- okay, I'm making sure. Frank, you found it? Yeah, it's a weed game. Uh, in, in the chat, I'm going to link you to- I found the, the URL for the website for this game, so I'm going to link oh, you to still it. still looking at the Ghost Go, go check it out. The uh, Lost, the Lost and, the and the Wicked website expired. <laughs> oh. 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 I love how that story ends. That's beautiful. <laughs> so we'll never know. Oh, wait. The video game has a... It's a brutal twin stick psycho thriller. Ooh. <laughs> brutal twin stick How are you supposed to smoke weed with both your hands on an analog stick? We're out of time, so I'm going to reveal the top five list. Okay, because we failed. Okay. I got yeah. one. Uh, uh, Brandon, you got one. Uh, number five is a Tom Holland Spider-Man action figure. Okay. 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 I think my uh, my uh, Loki your fun, from your Thor Loki Ragnarok. Yeah, that's a fun for one. Oh, that's what I'm saying. You should you should have found the the closest equivalent. Yeah. You owe me one. <laughs> okay. Fine. Uh, yeah, Tim. I'll I'll give you that point. Uh, number four <laughs> right. is plastic trading card sleeves. Uh, those wow. sell very well at games. Okay. All right. Uh, three is the Squishmallows Pikachu. Two is a Darth Vader Christmas sweater. That's a very big seller this year. That okay. might be the, that might be mine. <laughs> that might count as yours, Frank. <laughs> what does it say on it? Yeah, does it have pixels? Uh, let me try to pull it up. There's got to be some bad, stupid pun on there. Yeah. You are my son of God. Yeah, this is it. I'm putting in the chat. No, they they, they leave God out of Christmas yeah, goods, know. Brandon. No, it just says Darth Vader. On it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Oh my God, they didn't even try and make a pun. <laughs> no. That rules. no. Well, that would that would be uh in the na- in the words of Gen Z, that would be cringe. Yeah. Yeah. Puns are very cringe. And number one by a very, very wide margin to the point that this this itself was practically the top 10 and I condensed them down to one point. Can one, opener. Can opener. Uh, is different varieties of Pokemon trading cards. Those still, uh-huh. still sell still? extremely yeah. well. You know, I kind of wonder if if the sleeves is, because uh, I assume that's a cheap item. Uh, yeah, it's a cheap item. There's some things that I expect must sell quite well at GameStop for reasons of being enough to tick you over into free shipping because oh. When, oh. when i had to order something from gamestop recently because i wanted to get alan wake remaster on ps5 and that was the only place to do it at a reasonable price i needed to spend two dollars to save eight dollars and so i got like tom clancy's the division for <laughs> two bucks on xbox one because that saved me money that's fun and you get a little treat yeah 
I got a little treat that I immediately traded to a game store. But then again, what also might explain the card sleeves is the overwhelming popularity of trading cards. I don't think that has anything to do with it. No. Mm-hmm. no. GameStop sucks, dude. I just want to also point out that uh, uh, Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is played by Tom Holland and Loki is played by Tom Hiddleston. So that's true. That's two Tom H's I, and they're both British. <laughs> is that Tom Crackett? They are British. Little, little bit closer than- Yeah, uh, I'm giving Frank a point, Brandon a point, and Tim a point for that. No, one. I got I, right. I, I was my joke was I want two points. It's, it's Tom H. That's pretty close. I don't oh, know. Oh man, Brandon I'm just literally got the squishy Pikachu. Squishies. He even got the squishy in there. Yeah. I want so squishies. I think he yeah. wins that round. I don't nah. think I actually get a point. Come no. on. No. All right. No. Uh, do you want another question or should we take a break? What do you think? I'll take I'll take Frank's point. All right. We'll get uh, we'll give Tim Frank's point. <laughs> let's, let's, let's do a question. Wait, it's that easy? Yeah, Apparently. you forfeit the point. It's a negotiation over here. <laughs> you, somebody's got to take. I'm it. very suggestible. <laughs> uh, I would like all of you to design the greatest Santa Claus video game of all time. Stealth game? No, mm. I hate those. Uh, so first of all, he's evil, and number okay. two, uh, he's getting revenge because someone <laughs> killed Mrs. Claus. All these movies. Uh, we're back to Biff Whiff again, aren't we? <laughs> Somebody Mortal Kombat fatality. Uh, uh, Mrs. Claus. What? Well, we got a good John Wick thing going. Why is he evil? That's where well, I'm. Well, because someone killed Mrs. evil, I mean, he's dark. Got it. He doesn't okay. care. Got anymore. it. Yeah, I'm. I'm into it. He's morally unhinged. I want a totally different scenario myself, where Santa is trying to deliver presents. Well, let me just finish mine and okay. say I was just going to basically it was going to be Bioshock. Oh, I see. Except oh. in the North Pole. <laughs> nice. But that that's it, really. Bioshock. Very good. You're trying to deliver presents to the kids, but if they see you. They turn into the Last of Us um, fungus zombies. Oh, oh and, you, and then you have to kill them. Then you yeah. have to kill them, but right. you w- don't want or to. Or they kill others. Th- yeah. Because right. then you get the bad ending. I think the best uh, the best case scenario here is this is, uh, we were just talking about how Naughty Dogs made one game in the last uh, of us. eight years. Uh, and it's the Last of Us 2. They've basically, they're, they're basically stuck in purgatory the rest of their existence. They'll be making stuff set in the Last of Us universe. I think they should throw a curveball. I think a Last of Us Gaiden side story game where you are Santa Claus in the world of the Last of Us and you have to deliver one present to the only good child remaining. Mm. But then that child kills someone before he can get there and it was all for nothing. Basically something like that, yeah. A Noel of Joel. Or... We could do a we could do a Death Stranding where um, Norman Re- Re- Rebus Reedus just gets a, a Santa hat and does his regular job. Oh yeah, yeah I'd play it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm saying that the I w- again my my joke here about the, the Santa Claus in the Last of Us world was going to just basically make it sound like Death Stranding. Yeah, I was going to say it's really hard to walk because you, your reindeer yeah, are yeah, all yeah. dead. It's going to carry and, uh, stuff. Uh, yeah, I was I was going to gradually build up to it just being Death Stranding made by the Last of Us team starring Santa Claus. But which which celebrity plays Santa Claus though? Oh, I was going to jokingly say Norman Reedus uh, at the okay. end of it yeah, to make sure good, it was good. clear. Okay, should we should we let you? Do the no, joke no, we, it, it's, it's not worth it. It's not <laughs> yeah. worth it. It it actually wasn't worth it to begin with. <laughs> Got That's it. the interesting okay. part. Uh, this is as far as my idea has gone. I, I want Santa to be able to go in the dumpster sometimes. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's, so that's the thing. I was going to pitch basically, well, basically Hitman. Yeah. But Santa just delivering presents and sneaking around and trying not to get caught. What I'm noticing is all these pitches concern Santa on Christmas, but there are 364 other days of the year where Santa's doing stuff. That's when he hibernates. Stardew Valley. Santa yeah. setting yeah. up the North Pole, making presents, assigning stuff to elves, mm, romance like and this. Mrs. Claus, I taking like care of the reindeer. Done. Mm, yeah. Putting the elves in the box when they misbehave. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Maybe there are a bunch of potential Mrs. Clauses, and you get to pick which oh. one becomes the canonical Mrs. Claus. And some of them are really hot. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. you can get mods for that. <laughs> yeah. And if you need if you need help with him, like, sort of determining his own needs for that, uh, you can go in the dumpster where he thinks his best thoughts. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. can make Santa work <laughs> out so that he gets, like, shredded. I've got one for Frank and the British. It's a side-scroller. He's got a big head. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he can jump on things and collect presents, and they bounce up and down. Oh, that's called oh, uh, Days Before go. Christmas. Uh, it's on the. Uh, they, that's called like every 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 Christmas <laughs> Amiga game <laughs> in the in the nineties. I recently played through Days Before Christmas. Uh, 
Not recommended. It's all there's, right. There's one on the Genesis too. It's, it's recommended if you just want to play a dumb game that ends in like two hours and you beat it your first time. I wouldn't play that with a 10 foot pole. Are you saying you played Days Before Christmas, Days Before Christmas? Oh, uh, you did. It was weeks before Christmas, which is, right. yeah, it was like, it was like five weeks if ago. It's not a collection of a week days. Is a, if not a unit of days. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you. It's nice to have someone backing me up for a change on this show. <laughs> I could be a heel, though. You never know where my <laughs> my allegiance is going to lie. I don't know which way you're coming. All right. I think we've settled it. That's the best Santa game, the uh, Amiga one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's dumpster in there. Like, we, we all determined whatever No, there has to be a dumpster. Yeah, there's Absolutely. a dumpster. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Should we take our break now? Let's do it. Yeah, all right. We'll be yeah, right back. I got to visit the dumpster. But Santa used to be green, right? And then Coca-Cola made him wear made red. Made him red, because uh, that's the color of Coca-Cola. Yeah. yeah, that I know. No, that's the palette swap two-player Santa. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to welcome you back to Insert Credit. For this segment, I'd like us to deviate for one just jot of time. Just one jot. jot. Just a Let's jot. Let's talk about Hanukkah. Oh, I like that one. Now, for a Hanukkah topic, I would like to talk about the game theory behind dreidel. Uh, do we all know how dreidel works here? No. Yeah, you spin it. Uh, you make it out of clay. I know that. Yeah. I, I got my dog with me, by the way, everybody. Those are, that's everything yeah. I know was just been expressed. Yeah. I got my dog. Okay, so I'm going to explain the rules of dreidel to you really quickly, and we'll see if we can improve the game from there, because it's pretty simple. It's a gambling game mostly played by children, typically for a pot of chocolate coins. Guilt. Uh, yeah, gelt, yeah. as you call it. Mm -hmm. There's this top that you play with. Everyone takes turns spinning the top, and there are four sides to the top. So it's essentially like rolling a four-sided die. Gimmel. One face is the nun, which is nothing. Yeah, when you get that, that, you lose your turn. It goes to the next person. Okay. One side is the gimmel, which Heck if you yeah. roll the gimmel, you just get everything in the Give pot. Give me that gimmel. Okay. Hey is another one. Uh, it, with hay, you get half of everything that's in the pot. Yeah. Uh -huh. And with shin, all of your gelt, you have to put it back in the pile. Back in the pot. Okay. Yeah. I don't like that one. As you can understand, this game lasts about like three or four spins and then it's over. Because mm -hmm. like the moment yeah. there's no candy left in the center, why would anyone have any impetus to keep playing? Yeah. Uh, like I'm not going to risk my candy. If I didn't have all the candy, I would just uh, I would just walk outside and then keep walking in one direction. You this know, is what yeah. happens in every game of dreidel I played as a child. So I'm everyone leaves and then walks in one direction. Yeah, yeah except yeah. the kid with all the chocolate. Here's another thing yeah. that happens in in games that I have played of dreidel, which mm -hmm. is uh, people start eating their candy as soon as they get it. Right. What? And so you uh, sometimes when you're when when you're uh, when you get Han or whatever, you put put your half your bits back in there. That's the shin. Uh, sorry, you put the all shin. Your bits um, back in. Yeah, okay. I've forgotten all the all the words because it was as a as a very young youth. But uh, uh, there would be less less half than there used to be. Oh yes, <laughs> people had consumed, and so I think there's there's p potentially something there. To uh, it, I don't think it improves the game, but it makes it more interesting. If the person who eats chocolate the fastest gets the most, then you're in trouble because right. uh, the pot is going to diminish. I'm yeah. just saying, but once all of the chocolate from the center is claimed, there's no reason for anyone to keep playing. It's true. There yeah. could be a double or nothing, two dreidels after that. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. don't. Like a dreidel gacha. A double dreidel. Are you are you asking me to redesign this uh, yes. centuries-old game so that it's a little bit more fun? That's yeah. exactly what I'm doing, yes. Well, I charge a fee of about $256 <laughs> per hour for that, <laughs> with the minimum booking being literally eight hours. So, But I could do it. The problem, the thing is nobody <laughs> owns dreidel, so... I could do right. it. It's public yeah. domain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I, I think I want more like mini games and spinoff things. Mini games. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have an idea I'm here thinking, that goes well, with well, yours. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, like, like this is as far as I got, but um, I think every side shouldn't have an immediate action. It should pull up the next phase, okay. and the next phase should be one of those like grade school fold up paper things where you like go back and forth and then yeah, like the unfold papers. Yeah, to see who, who which third grader you're going to marry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I think there should be four of those, 
associated with the four sides of the dreidel. I like this. And that, and that, that spins off into interesting uh, directions. Um, yeah. But yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a different direction. Like, like go in the dumpster. About. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like the dumpster. <laughs> oh, there's absolutely a dumpster bit on the cootie catcher. Yeah. So the way I was going to go is, is a little different. More of a Beyblade direction. I'm into it. I'm intrigued. Where you've all got your own dreidel. It's a different mm-hmm. color. For those that are colorblind, you can mark it a different way. Thank you. So see, there's four of you, and you spin, you spin them all, and uh, whoever's falls first, yours doesn't count. Oh, oh. interesting. You get it, like, and so okay. the, like, there's four, and then the last one to fall, that actually counts. And so it, it adds some skill on top of the luck. And then you could maybe do teams as oh, well. I like this a lot, actually. Mm. Because every year, as I've gotten older, I have heard an increase of Beyblade jokes as Beyblade becomes more popular. So Mm -hmm. to actually incorporate that into the game design, I think, is the canonical Hanukkah way to go. Call it Dreyblade. Dreyblade. We were all sad. I I would actually uh, say that, uh, you know, again, I charge a fee for this, uh, but Brandon's is way over designed and you could accomplish (laughs) – you could accomplish more of the same impact simply by adding one new face to the dreidel. I was thinking oh. extra dreidel faces. I cannot sure. uh, I cannot go, go into detail on what that dreidel face would be, but mm-hmm. it was the first thing to pop into mind, and I played through several scenarios, and it is pretty good. So you could turn dreidel Cough into up. a really good game with one new face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's true, but I'm like I feel like for some reason I'm more comfortable with battling dreidels than I am with changing the design of the dreidel itself. Mm. Well, I mean, you'd have to change the design a bit to get them to spin uh, excitingly in the Beyblade arena That's for a long period of time. Yeah, but also that would probably be the the way to go anyway. Like whatever. Mm-hmm. I would say that uh, if you were to add a face to my particular babe, uh, um, Dreyblade. Dreyblade. Dreyblade, please. That face would be take half of whoever has the most. Oh. oh. There is no mechanic in Dreidel as it stands to take candy from other players. Right. Taking yeah. it from other yeah. players would help keep it going if the, even if the pot is empty. empty. So you'd have right. to, you'd have to take it down to like, once the pot is empty, there's one last spin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, make it Mario Party. Put it on the screen. Everyone gets a Joy-Con, you know, mm-hmm. and then you get the opportunity to steal. Yeah, yeah, and and you, and you get the fun Mario time. You got to waggle, yeah. but there's no real candy in that scenario aside yeah. from the That's candy. That's on the parents, your, you know. Your parents give you because mm. they feel sorry for you. Mm. I'm I'm feeling pretty good about Drayblade. We can call it there. You know that that Hanukkah gelt is not not too bad tasting. No, it's not. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice treat. But sometimes you you wind up like getting a little piece stuck in the in the in the gold foil, and you try oh, to yeah. get it out with your teeth, oh, and yeah. then and then you're all you're all in foil town flavor wise. Oh yeah, well, it's happen- happened happened to me too many times. You're in Tinsel Town, baby. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, which video game company do you think holds the best Christmas party? Hmm. You know, in in the fictional universe where things are fun, mm-hmm. yes, that's where we are right now. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think I think Sega because Sega has never stopped giving their characters little hats for free on Christmas or having mm-hmm. a little little extra bonus thing that you can unlock on that particular day. They're the house of Christmas nights. They continue to enjoy yeah. it, so yeah. I think they they got to be up there at least. In so much as uh, you know, I, I, they don't actually have. Christmas parties at corporations in Japan. No. They have New Year's parties. But um I think Konami like circa 1999 in Tokyo would have had really good Christmas parties. Mm. Uh if they had Christmas parties. The Tokimeki Memorial games have very good Christmas parties in them. If you've never listened to uh the Tokimeki Memorial one uh the Forever with You version, not the PC Engine version, uh Christmas party soundtrack like the the song that plays during the Christmas party in TM One Forever with You. If you've never listened to that on a loop for like an hour, then you've never truly chilled with Christmas. <laughs> Christmas Nights has the first 3D Sonic in a video game. That's true. That's true. And yes, s- and he sucks. <laughs> but no, I truly believe that uh, Sega would be the best at having a Christmas party. Uh, and I'm sh- and maybe even Sega of America does have a Christmas party. Uh, and it might actually even be a really good one. If you're talking about a company that just doesn't care at all, you know, illegal substances, mm-hmm. partying all night, wargaming. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wargaming, for sure. Like, yeah. if you want to 
really go off the rails. Or Devolver. Yeah. I think Devolver, Devolver would have just a genuinely very fun Christmas party. Mm. Yeah. Devolver has a lot of experience throwing events that are adjacent to parties, uh, if not yeah. parties themselves. Mm. I mean, there's 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 something a little uh can't believe I'm saying this, but there's something a little too corporate about Devolver <laughs> that makes me think their party would be more like a startup tech bros idea of a good party. Like, mm. No offense to them. I, I think that's possible. I'm sure it's fine. But I also think that they could, th- since they have such an established structure for party uh, organization, it could yeah. actually be a pretty mm-hmm. chill place as an attendee to not have to worry about expectations and stuff too. So it could go either way for me. I'm not. I'm not sure about that either. But I can understand. Uh, l- let's actually change the question now. We're we're transforming the question. Go ahead. Which video game designer, developer, or otherwise industry celebrity would you hire to plan your multi-billion-dollar corporate Christmas party? For me. Tetsuya Nomura, dude. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I'd get Tetsuya Nomura to plan me because that that guy. He'd do something. You see what he did with Disney World, right? <laughs> like, uh, I want to see what he could do with a corporate Christmas party. Everyone gets like five belts before they turn up. I'd go Keita Takahashi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Keita Takahashi. There's not that many belts. There's a fair number of belts. There's a few belts. There's a couple guys with belts. Yeah, but your belts are redeemed for prizes later. That's true, evening. yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Well, your, your belts are tenure, you know? Yeah, every mm. every 10 years you've worked at the company, you get a, another belt. And your shoes go an extra size up. So, Jeff, you said Keita Takahashi? Yeah. The problem is he would take he would take several years to plan it, and then yeah. he would be like, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> and then he would, say, he would say, actually, here's what I got. Can you give me $5? And it would be some party hats. No <laughs> yeah. offense to Nobi Nobi Boy. And you have to color them yourself. Yeah, and it's all also it's the middle of August. I don't think any of this is offense to him. It's just <laughs> you see, I would like that. his way. You know, I think would just throw a genuinely nice party. I think Tim Schafer. He might. Yeah, that would be fun. I think Tim Schafer could throw a nice party. But I don't think it would be like a multi-billion dollar one. Tim Schafer could certainly write uh, two or three sentences, each of which ends with a snippy little twist uh, <laughs> on the invitation for a Christmas party, <laughs> each of which ends with a really, really like script doctor, like PhD of script doctoring, punched the heck up little snippy twist uh, deliverable at like an awards ceremony. I would get him to write the invitations for to the my Tetsuya Nomura Christmas party. And the cocktail menu? Yeah, like, yeah. There has the, to be the, puns on that. With like thing. the really, yeah. like the really, really trashy names with really yeah. snippy, quippy descriptions. Yeah. You need them. Yeah, I would get those, and you could get Jack Black to be the MC of the party. Oh, he's Santa. Yeah. Well, that's mm-hmm. you know that's uh, okay. I've, Chris, I've, Chris I've, Kringle actually. I've got yeah, one. I think. Yeah. All right, okay. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Heather Hawkins. Heather Hawkins was the head of PR for the Dreamcast. All uh, right. Oh, wow. And did all of those bizarre oh, stunts. Yes. And did a bad job, I guess, is what uh, you're about to say. That. No offense. <laughs> she, she did all kinds of fun. No, she did great. I mean, they, they, they had that launch that was amazing. Uh, I guess they, you know, they, had, they, they had a couple of games on there that was good. She did great in making ineffectual events. The, yeah. No, the, I mean yeah. it did it did too. We're trying to tell you, Brandon, maybe you don't know that the Dreamcast failed. What? Everybody knows PR is responsible for everything. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. She she personally um, cracked that system, and the piracy was her fault. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah, the piracy thing. Lord. I'm gonna say Heather Hawkins would plan a really fun Xmas party, especially you know if it was video game oriented in some way. I think she'd uh, and and it would be something I wouldn't expect. Like Limp Biscuit would show up, but I would be happy for some reason. <laughs> oh God! And they would sing Silent Night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would, I would be like, "This is the worst thing I've ever seen," but I'll remember it forever. That's yeah, what they would, would they would show up and do like video game covers that they rehearsed only once. Yeah, last yeah, night. that's time. In, yeah. in my life, I personally could do with remembering a, a few fewer of worst things. Oh, well, uh, fair enough. I wouldn't mind that. I Here's could, my next I question. Mind, wouldn't mind subtracting a couple. Based on video games, what do we know about L? I just want to say that my Apple TV Sexy. turned itself on, and which turned the TV on about 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And uh, while we were doing that Christmas party question, there was just some trailer silent because, you know, I don't know, it, auto-playing for some like Ted Lasso Christmas special thing with oh, like oh the boy. cast of Ted Lasso. 
with that that weird lady singing on a stage and then all the Mariah Carey? soccer players from Ted Lasso wearing tuxedos and handing her presents and stuff. And I'm just staring at that the whole time we're having this discussion about Christmas parties. <laughs> and uh, I just kept, you know, like the matrix, not like this dot G I F <laughs> the whole time is, ju- is what I had in mind for the whole thing. Cause, uh, I, 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 wow. I don't know who would watch that. Now it's playing a trailer for Taylor Swift, the Eras tour, mm-hmm. which it has paused now. Um, and I would much rather watch that. So, uh, elves, elves. are sexy, right? Elves? That's what, what we know yeah. about video games from video what games. What we know about elves from video games. What we know about elves in general is there's too many types of elf, right? Mm. Yeah. There's high just too many. Wood. The definition is too diffuse. Yeah, high wood, dark. They're always they're almost always Welsh. It's true. That's true. Because it sounds There's like elf. Welsh yeah. elves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because all fantasy has to be British. Hell yeah. So it does. if you're gonna pick a race that's not human, <laughs> but still in that area, then I guess you go Welsh. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. Scottish is dwarf. And That's true. then you're just mm-hmm. out of options. Yeah, then you have to divide it up into the different types of English. Irish is fairies. Yeah. Yeah. Irish is fairies. Mm-hmm. Scottish is dwarf. Welsh is elves. And then regular humans are just English. Yeah. They're just English. Exactly. Yeah, there's city this well, there's city humans and country humans. So there's there's oi gov humans and there's oi mate humans. Yeah. Right? There's there's northerners and southerners, basically. Basically. And I'm actually a northerner. Doesn't sound like it, but I am. So I get to I get to straddle both lines. You walk in two worlds. Yeah. So I'm the, I'm the day walker. <laughs> the little elves, the little yeah. d- diminutive elves with pointed curly feet, shoes. The <laughs> yeah. They they don't uh, show up too much in video games, do they? No. Uh, unless like you're them. talking about elf bowling. Like like Link might be one of the closest analogs. That's true. Zelda mm-hmm. one Link. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He had a Keebler vibe. Mm-hmm. In the game, especially if you were like me, nobody leaked no god darn child photos of me because, first of all, there's only two of them and uh, they're both equally horrendous. <laughs> you look at a photo of me as a child, you know that kid played Zelda and thought that's a little Keebler elf right there because, you know, he was well acquainted with the Keeblerisms. Because right? he knows uh, where there's little little yeah. Keebler cookies come from. He knows from. where his fudge is striped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, fudge stripes were, in fact... Uh, they were my flavor of the month every month mm, as yeah. a child, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. as a chibis, as a chibis. Oh, yeah. I it's was the uh, best one. There's not even a competition. It's it's actually it's really grotesque that they have any <laughs> other cookie. <laughs> right? Ha- have we all had a fudge stripe here? No, nope. oh, it's Kibler so good. fudge no. stripe. No, nope. I have no idea what you're talking about. I actually don't know it either. It's a, it's an well, look look up Keebler fudge stripe. It's a it's an American cookie. It sounds like it's going to get me put on a list, if I'm honest. No, <laughs> you, you've got stupider cookies over yeah, there. Really oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. No, no, they call them biscuits. Yeah, they're there. digestive yeah. biscuits. Come on. Yeah. Or rich tea. <laughs> you've yeah. got similar cookies and uh, even stupider ones. Yeah, uh, they have the audacity to call them digestive as if it's like good for your health. Yeah, it, help, it helps you digest That's your food. That's a spe- yeah. sp- specific type of. Yeah, I, it's just I, a cookie. You can get it. You can get it. No, it's a biscuit. And you can get it covered <laughs> in chocolate. Help, it helps it helps digestive you with your digestion. Yeah. Yeah, you eat that chocolate. It's eat. actually uh, my gastroenterologist has told me no more chocolate ever for the rest of my life. Wow. Because I have gastritis. Well, it's because that... you're not British. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I mean, hey, I'm lactose intolerant in this country, but back home, dairy all day, baby. Wait, is that true? Yeah. Like we have bad dairy? I didn't know that. Mate, you're the, the dairy over here, diabolical. No, the problem is our dairy is too good. She can only tolerate bad <laughs> dairy. That's right. That's how it is. Um, all what was the dairy question? worldwide is pretty bad. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. All dairy worldwide is pretty bad. I yeah. actually, like, for some reason, someone was asking me in the god darn Discord if I'm a vegan now because I was talking about oat milk. Did you not hear the part where I said whole milk is my milk? I did not say oat milk. It's true. Sim- it similarly, milk. when my only friend ordered a, a latte with uh, uh, oat milk the other day, or uh, she got whole milk. So I'm not no god darn vegan, and I'm I will not tolerate people thinking I am. Not that there's anything wrong with. That. I was just looking up elf video games, and uh, one of the first thing that came up was this uh, Japanese PC game for the PC ninety eight called oh, let's see. Elves. Let's see. elves. Elves. Yeah, I know. I know elves. Yeah. I know them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Elf. Elf? Yeah. Elf? Yeah. Is it elf? I, I don't, I'm not at my computer. It's elves. Elves. Yeah. Elves. I mean, I think elves. the most famous, like, titular ones would be elf bowling, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, everyone knows elf bowling. So what we, oh, we know, know about that they're bowling. basically just cannon fodder. So yeah, they're, they're, they're sexy. They can, they can get hit by bowling balls very easily. What about lost Vikings? What about three dirty dwarves? What about two crude dudes? That's not right? elves, and we're That's out of time. Elves. Well, uh, well we, I'm just trying to get us from elves to dudes uh, okay. in time for the next question. Okay, yeah, well, uh, here's our next question, which is not about dudes. Wait, okay. are the Lost Vikings not elves? That's a joke. What is the Rankin Bass of video games? Oh, no. Oh, man. Well, what, when what, you, what's what's the that of real life? I don't know what that is. Yeah, Rankin yeah, Bass that, is, is the production you company. You know Rankin that, Bass. I, I'm answering the question. Brandon knows. Rankin Bass is a production company that, among other things, well, they, they, they're mostly known for their Christmas specials. So, Rudolph the yes. Red-Nosed Reindeer, Frosty uh, the Snowman, Rudolph Shiny New Year. We talked about the stop motion the, ones? The year without a Santa Claus. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're stop motion, sometimes they're animated. But okay. let's, for the sake of argument, they're most known for the stop motion stuff, right? Correct. So, year without a Santa mm-hmm. Claus. Uh, but there's another component to them in uh, that uh, Rankin Bass is also for some reason responsible for Thundercats. What? Yeah, yeah they did some <laughs> traditional animation, but I think that was more of a like, like if you if you credit Atari with something today, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, okay. it's, I don't think there's a lot of continuity there with Thundercats. Um, so when, when you're talking about Rankin Bass, you're talking about they're, they're popular, they're famous for arguably two things, right? Like the Rudolph and Frosty. Is it, did they do Frost? Wait, not Frosty. I'm pretty sure they did Frosty. I think so Frosty, yeah. Check me on that. Or, they, they, they owned Christmas specials for, for, yeah. for decades. Yeah. And are they deemed good? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're, they're, they are beloved. Yes. If you watch them now, uh, today, you will perhaps uh, think, oh, what a delightful little piece of animation is yeah. the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which had a theme song and everything about it. There's some really good artistry to their their stop motion work. Yeah, it's it's also, if I'm not mistaken, and again, I'm not, I'm no, I purport not to be any sort of Christmas expert. Um, if I'm not mistaken, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the Rankin Bass special, that like was the origin of the song, right? It all came from that. There wasn't. I don't think a, that's true. No, uh, no, no, no. Rudolph they they Lee, adapted. But. They adapted the song. The song into a special. Because yeah. that's that actually. Uh, I lost respect for everyone involved with every aspect of that thing because it's like, <laughs> what, what? Why would you write just a song yeah. about that? Oh, right? it was to promote a mascot for Macy's. I think. Well, the, the song, the like song was like, like you know, they they wouldn't let them join in their reindeer games, and they're like, yeah. "What would those games be?" And it was like the origins of the reindeer games. Right. Yeah, they just they just bully this god darn guy because he's different until they realize how they can make some god darn money. Yeah, that's exactly. The, yeah, that's Whew, ain't that America, right? Yeah, uh, I'll I'll take Norman Rockwell's Santa Claus over that any day. So what I would say is like they they are known for adapting um, traditional ideas and expanding on the lore. Yeah, so it's okay. almost okay. not exactly a licensed game developer, a developer Lies who who focuses on maybe public domain IP. Yep. Right. Mm. Right. I mean, like 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 Year Without a Santa Claus, or maybe it was the other one. Like they there's one special where it's like here's Santa's origin story, and they made it up. Yeah. You know, so like that that's kind of what they're known for. I'd say. I mean, with, gotcha. with like Rudolph, I wouldn't just uh, I I wouldn't say it's necessarily so much that uh, the interesting aspect in defining the what is the them of video games would be the fact that it's uh, it's adapting an IP so much as it's like owning the aesthetic. Right, they're synonymous with the stop motion animation. They're synonymous with with the stop okay. motion animation, and they made stop motion animation synonymous with that moment, Christmas, <laughs> and the end. Oh. They made it. Uh, they made a guy like me, forty some years later, just believe fifty years, some years later, however many years later it is, think that they made the song. Mm. That they yeah. own it all so confidently. You know who who owns one thing so confidently like that. From from yeah from kind of does everything's like souls like now. Mm. The way they have an and identity. Everything certainly. stop motion. You say, oh, it's like Rankin Bass. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that you're definitely onto something. I there. mean, hey, playing Dark Souls on PC, am I right? Yeah, but I think that's just our current one of those. Yeah. You know, that would have been Doom in the '90s, right? That would have yeah. been dead. Yeah, this has lasted quite a while. That would have been Rockstar when we went open world all the time. You know, I mean, it's whatever it is. It's like it's not American McGee's Alice, for example, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> Where American McGee then for several years that turned into uh surprising many people decades 
uh, adapting uh, public domain sort of fairy tales into uh, ooh, ooh, creepy little twists. Wait, is it Kingdom Hearts? That's not public domain, but uh, well, I don't uh, want to get into like it's, it's, if you're getting into Kingdom the... Hearts is a year without a Santa Claus. If Santa is Mickey Mouse, Santa's Mickey yeah. Mouse, yeah, because it is it is a year without Mickey Mouse. Yeah, I think Kingdom Hearts is maybe the opposite thing. Yeah. Um, Because it's aggregating everything. But also we shouldn't go into like they own public domain stuff because that's just Disney. Mm. Yeah. Wait, is it Fortnite? Also, Rudolph the Red-Nosed mm, Reindeer uh, would not have been uh, public domain, right? Right. Sorry, I, I just wanted, like, the Fortnite thing. I, I, I think I'm good with Fortnite if... Fortnite's just everything, though. Yeah. yeah. Right, but but do people associate any of those characters as just being Fortnite characters? The banana. Oh, some, some kids. Chun-Li? The banana. Some kids do. Yeah, they don't okay. know. Oh, yeah. Some kids genuinely think that every video game character in Fortnite is from Fortnite. Right. Yeah, that happened with Smash also. My yeah. little brother's child thinks that Boba Fett is from Fortnite. Like, no yeah. joke. Oh, that's a compelling answer. Yeah, uh, Pornhub just released this list of the most searched for characters on mm-hmm. their website. One of them. And right. they listed Chun-Li from Fortnite. Oh, good yeah. lord. Wow. And one of, one of the only male characters on that list is, uh, or if not the only male character, is Sonic. Yeah. yeah. Mario's on there, too. Oh, yeah, Mario. That's right. But also, also, I don't count, like, I bet there's a porn star named Mario something that's like a popular search. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. Mario Jumpman. Kind of (laughs) Mario Jumpman. Yeah. Yeah, Mario Jumpman. Mario Steel or something. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's time. It's time for us to go on to our lightning round. Uh, Uh, I didn't, I wasn't satisfied with our answer. Okay. Well, let's adjudicate. Okay. what the rank in Bassa video games is. Frank, find an answer you're satisfied with. Well, okay, with. it has to be a company known for something, right? Like there's some consistency yeah. across their products. So who would that be other than From right now, right? Like, I don't know, Insomniac or something, right? Uh, I think that From was the good answer, the best yeah, answer. Yeah, From was had, definitely really. the answer, but we had to refute it because it was yeah. right up top and we had time to fill. <laughs> That's fair. I like Bless that. Okay, uh, it's time to do our lightning round. We're doing name design this week, Carol edition. Uh, the premise of name design, Lucy, if you're unfamiliar, is that I present you with a title that I picked from something, and you have to ignore everything you know about what the title describes and just come up with what a video game with that title would be like. And uh, this week, it's all Christmas songs. Uh, Our first one is God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. All right. I'll be honest. I don't even know uh, what the name of that song means in the context of the song. I'm not 100% sure what that means. I think it means have a good night's sleep. Yeah, well, that's, I assume it's that, but it's like. Well, it's, it's, it's that, or or if, if God is resting someone, isn't he like smiting them? Yeah. That, I that's mean, that's what, what you would think, but but uh, yeah. the, it's. it's a popular uh, style. You're God not game. supposed to dismay because, uh, because the Christ the Savior was born on Christmas Day, mm. and that means um, that you can just chill out. So gotcha. you can have a good night's sleep about it. It's a God game. It's like Populous. Uh, the mm-hmm. people are in the throes of a, a, a hedonistic anti-Renaissance, mm-hmm. and uh, you're giving up on them. So you, you, the God, are resting those merry gentlemen. Oh, this is a good yeah. noble. I've game. got another one here, which is uh, only works when you um, say it aloud and not when you read it. But uh, it's a visual novel mm-hmm. where you can uh, you can date a bunch of happy dudes. And uh, and then you rest with them after oh. afterward. Oh, so yeah, okay. Yeah, you can okay. you can uh, you can marry all kinds of gentlemen. I gotta say that's a little uh, it's a little heavy handed, Rick. <laughs> uh, I would agree. It's <laughs> a little belabored. Yeah, you crazy so. for this one, Rick. Uh, <laughs> what about Lemmings esque? Yeah, you gotta get those those Mary married gentlemen. gentlemen to get them get them to bed. Good. See, this is right. why we have they parachute mm, down an English person yeah. on the show so that we can uh-huh. get our Amiga views. <laughs> in here <laughs> like we should. lemmings lemmings is way more than an amiga game okay oh yeah, yeah. It's, true. it's everywhere it's a way of it was life. pc for me it's the one british game that managed to actually successfully infect everything yeah well also gta Grand Theft but, Auto? Um, yeah yeah I was gonna no, say. that doesn't count Grand Theft Auto doesn't count as a Brit game. I've got that uh, Adventures of Low Man. It's the same studio. It's literally the <laughs> same studio. It transcended, though. They transcended with Lemmings. <laughs> they transcended nationality. Lemmings uh, put them on the map. Next is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. 
Oh, oh it's a I mean, trombone champ, but it's yeah. with angels. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's gotta be it. That's it. And you're singing Christmas carols. I was thinking it was like a, a horizontal shooter with like a, a little angel guy who, who shoots out like music from his mouth. Oh, I like that better. Oh, yeah. Yes. And it could just be the word hark is really huge. Yeah. yeah. It's just called hark. H period, A like, period. Yeah. <laughs> it adds more periods to the acronym the longer you hold the button. Yeah. H A R K. Yeah. Hot action, relentless Kill it. kineticism. Chaos. No, I think it's religious for our religious. Hot action, religious kineticism. <laughs> the Herald Angels sing. That's it. And yes. you're like some huge, Done. like, like, like metal storm looking robot. Tetsuya uh, Mizuguchi with a, with a halo. Uh, just, just a little one to throw in here is, um, is a Kenji Ino soundscape game where you can only hear where the angels are, uh, and you have to okay. avoid them or else they kill you. Mm. Peace on earth. Peace on earth. Peace on earth. And we spell it P E so P I E C E. It's a, PC? Now, it's now a gun. Like wait, that would be PC on Earth, mm. right? <laughs> like I Reese's. Peace on earth. Post pandemic or whatever, the world is ruined. Survival game. The Last Rebuild. of Us Four. The, <laughs> the Last, Last of Us Part of us Four. Powerful. Peace on Earth. <laughs> I like it. It's the That's multiplayer it. mode. When nature has finally reclaimed everything. <laughs> yeah. And then Vin uh, Diesel is there. Little drummer boy. Little drummer boy. LDB. LDB. Uh, it's playable with the rock band's drum controller. No. The Donkey Konga bongos. The Donkey Konga. Donkey Kongo bongos. My God, I love those bongos. <laughs> you ever plug those in to whatever you got and just I do don't not. even turn just... the TV on? <laughs> tabity, tabity, tabity. You know what? Can we actually be 100% real about the Donkey Konga bongos? Maybe the, mo the most cursedly vile tactile button action of all time. <laughs> Those things. Have you ever just palpated them with like three fingertips? Just kind of like, you ever like act, like let your fingernails just like gently graze them? It's like someone <laughs> took the rubber <laughs> off a half rotten dual shock one <laughs> and oh stretched God. it over a drum head. Oh, uh, it, it is. is it is real oh. bad. Have you ever been in the house of a person who possesses said bongos and has proudly displayed them on a shelf in uh, in just full access to you know, the air of a house? And and <laughs> have you ever touched them and felt uh, just soaked and caked with dirt as they become? I, I could say something even worse than that, which is that ten years ago they would show yeah. up in thrift stores, and I touched one of those. Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, no. That's what, that's, that's what I'm getting at here, because I saw <laughs> yeah. one at, at the God Darn Half Price Books in Concord, California, birthplace of Tom Hanks. He was born in that in that Half Price Books. Um, <laughs> yeah, that Half Price Books is a bank now. Is it, is it gone now? Yeah, they, well, they, they opened it in a different location, but the yeah, one that you're good, referring good to is, a, is a bank. No Price Books now. That actually was a great place for a Half Price book. Yeah, it's more like No Price Books now. Um, man, yes, yeah, so I palpated them bongos several times, and it was just like, it is just the rottenest, vilest, like, dead skin sort of rubber, you know? Reminds you simultaneously of a day at the spa and like your grandma's funeral, right? It's like, there's there's so much wrong with those bongo controllers, dude. Once they've been around long enough. But even even brand new, even brand new, with the, with the switches intact, they, they felt real bad. Uh, there was just so much wrong with them. And that's Little Drummer Boy. And that's a little drummer boy. Yeah, you got you got you got to find some of those bongos, and you've got to buy. It's it's a Steam game, and you have to buy an adapter from the developer to use the bongos on your uh, PC because the other available ones won't work. I think that's time. That's that's it for our lightning round. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. Have, give me another one. Oh, okay, fine. I'll roll give you another one. one. You've got more of them. I do have more. I know there's more of them. Yeah, uh, take Fairy Tale of New York. That was the next one on my list. Fairy Tale of New York. I haven't what? heard yeah. that one. It's the song that people who don't yeah. like Christmas is yeah. uh, like to say is the good Christmas song, but oh, it's yeah. not. All right, R. I. P. Um, thingy. I thought that was Christmas rapping by the waitresses. <laughs> oh yeah, that's another one in there. That's another. That's another one. I've heard too yeah. many people say. And, oh, that's and how, how, how do we get oh, Mariah Carey in here? Is uh, like now. I already opened the show with Mariah Carey. I, I didn't want to double. Back. You know what? That's I'm going to say something that Mariah Carey. Song. It's been on the radio every Christmas, yeah. every year since I've been a you know a teen. 
mm-hmm. uh, when it was new. Maybe that is the best Christmas song. I Maybe. think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Da-dum, I think, da-dum, 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 we had to be objective da-dum. about it. I, we had I to like be it. Objective. I think. I think she might have finally kicked rocking around the Christmas tree to the curb. I also like how she the the degree to which she uh, owns that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Just, oh, yeah. Despite the fact that she's had an incredibly successful career doing all kinds of different songs, she's uh, she's she's ready to to go to bat. For, she's for Rudolph. She's Frosty. She's one of the Christmas things. I've been I've been saying since I was in college. Every time that song comes on the radio, she says, "All I want for Christmas is you." Uh, she's not calling me. What <laughs> <Yes>. the heck? <laughs> I've also I'm right here. Jokes. I don't have your number. What the heck? That's my favorite. No, she's joke. specifically talking about the Wii U. That's yeah. Also, oh, 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 that's what she wants. All I want for Christmas is Wii U. Right. Hey, can you imagine if Nintendo, if the PR director <laughs> who of the that. Dreamcast had uh, had oh. been hired by Nintendo for their Dreamcast, <laughs> oh. uh, uh, yeah. which was the Wii U, to uh, get Mariah Carey to sing "All I Want for Christmas Is a Wii U." <laughs> All I want for Christmas, Wii U. Yeah, can you imagine? I still got this Taylor Swift the Heiress tour trailer on loop uh. here. <laughs> <laughs> on loop? When is some yeah, I don't know why, but it's just looping on the Apple TV. It was cycling through trailers and it just stopped on Taylor Swift. All right. And uh, uh I, I don't know. I think let's call it there. Okay. How about that? Does Taylor Swift okay. have a Christmas song? She's if she it. does, I if she does, it's uh it's Gwen the Stefani Christmas has song. a Christmas album, which Gwen is Gwen Stefani's dead. Yeah. She is she was Wait, replaced. Is she she no. got run over by a reindeer. She married Blake Shelton. Well, if you look at the photo, she's like like the person they purport to be her is like two inches yeah. shorter. If you yeah. right, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like the fake Avril <laughs> Lavigne thing. Exactly. Yes. Oh no, the uh, bigger Luke. You want to know? I just want to say I lived in Japan for a while, and every time, okay, look, look, we're not joking about like Brandon. We don't need to make the joke where you pretend that you don't know I lived in Japan. I thought you were you making the joke. No, I'm not making the joke. I'm a guy who god darn makes big old YouTube videos. I'm a guy who live streams every week. And every time I say something, there's like at least 10 people who've never heard it before. Like, uh, come on. You want to grow your audience. Uh, you need to make sure people are on the right page. Uh, I lived in Japan. Who cares? Yeah, that's why I started the episode by prefacing that I'm Jewish. People might yeah, say See, uh, Gwen, every time Gwen Stefani came up in conversation, uh, uh, any, any, any one of my my Japanese uh, friends would would just kind of roll their eyes and uh, about that that Harajuku girl thing. Oh yeah, that she oh, did. Right. Mm. They she were, they were just, them all. As they well. were so gravely offended by just th- that whole thing, like genuinely gravely offended by it. As so. they should be. Yeah, she she named them too. I wonder if they yeah, and also pronounced around. it pronounced it like ridiculously wrong and. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, that whole thing. So that's why Gwen Stefani's dead. She is. She is dead, right? No, she's alive. Oh, that's weird. She's on The Voice, hmm. I think. That's yeah, You know where, what? Where, voice. Where, where Wait, she's on The Voice? go to die. She's she on was. The Voice. Yeah, yeah you're, 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 you're professionally right. dead. If you've, ever, if you've ever set foot on the set of like The Masked Singer or The Voice oh, yeah. or any one of those shows, you are professionally dead. Um, Thank you. Does anyone have any recommendations for our good little listeners who will be hearing this on Christmas Day? Oh, they uh, should be Christmas themed if possible, right? Oh, Unless, Christmas recommendations. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, should yeah, they do yeah. today? Have a good time. Because they've woken up at midnight to listen to this while they wait for Santa. <laughs> is it is this Christmas Day that this comes out? Yeah, this is Christmas Day that this drops. Um, unless something goes wrong, check out uh, GameHistory.org where there will be a, a, a video about a, a, a very strange game that I've only ever talked about on this podcast before now. Um, mm. which is called Super Sushi Pinball. Um, it is a game that never fun. came out. It is something that uh, was <laughs> was meant to be uh, the second game ever published by Sony in the United States after Super Dodgeball. Um, and it's, uh, it is bizarre. And uh, go check out our YouTube or whatever and uh, go check out this video that I shot. And don't make fun of my forehead this time. Nice. Well, you got people making fun of your forehead. What? Because yeah. of your Sonic video? Yeah, there's like four comments saying my forehead's too big. Try oh. try posting like eight of those. I don't know uh, that I and want then, to. And then <laughs> to try posting yeah. a couple that are like longer than three hours and have been up for several years. Oh, that's a lot of time to look at your forehead. And then uh uh it's not even it's not even the forehead. I get comments about everything. 
Uh, yeah. My forehead's uh, fine. It's my hairline. Make fun of my hair. hair. Not yeah, my I'm more concerned about my hind head. What are they telling you to get bangs? What are they doing? No, they're saying my forehead's too big. And and they're saying it in a way that makes no sense. Like, like they're trying to be insulting. But Oh, yeah, yeah. One yeah, of them just, was like, your forehead looks like two children in a trench coat. That doesn't make sense at all. What? That, uh, yeah, right? What do you even mean? One of them said, I literally busted out my tape measure. Like, I feel what? like they're just telling on themselves now because they don't know how to insult people correctly. Yeah. Is, what is that in YouTube comments or what is yep. that? Yeah. Uh, you just delete those. I just delete all of those that I they get. They could only use the words in their cards against humanity hand. To <laughs> <insult> yeah, <laughs> yeah. At, at, at that point, See, that, they, they might as well. That's a good insult. Yeah, that's a good one. They might as well use AI at that point is uh, what I would say. You might as well just ask AI to make uh, generate an insult about someone's forehead Yeah. Uh, at that point. I think uh, it would be smarter than two children in a trench coat. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't yeah, make any sense. No, that, that makes no sense. But yeah. maybe it's deliberately wrong to make you think about it more. I'm still talking about it. I made a joke in one of my videos once where I was like, am I 36 years old or am I four nine-year-olds in a trench coat? And I immediately got a reply that's like, it's more like you're four nine-year-olds in a trench coat because you're like a nine-year-old. And it's like, it was just like, <laughs> just some insane comment that's like, oh, this, does, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Uh, my joke was playing off the idea that four nine-year-olds standing on one another's shoulders would be much, much, much taller probably than me. Uh, oh, I saw them in a, in a, in a square configuration. In yeah. Oh, which yeah. would be a little different. Yeah. One uh, operating the right arm, one doing the yeah. left. But yeah. it's like it's one thing when you make it when you make like a self-deprecating joke in a YouTube video and then you wind up with like 12 people just like repeating the joke to you like joylessly. Yeah. When you said that you were right. And then it's like, oh, OK, is that it? That's <laughs> is, all that, got. is that all, is that okay. all we've got? So uh, uh, recommendations? Yes, please. Uh, this is not exactly a recommendation, but oh, well, if, that's, if, if this well, opportunity <laughs> comes up for you, that would be, it would be fun. I recently found a movie while browsing a real life store mm -hmm. called uh, um, Raiders of Atlantis. And it was, it, it's a, it's a delight when something like this happens because it's a, this is a movie that's tailored for me to have watched it already, but I had never seen it. It's a sci-fi uh, post-apocalyptic horror movie um, from th an Italian director in the 80s with a ridiculous soundtrack. And this is exactly the kind of movie that I would always watch, but I'd never seen it. So that it was, was also uh, released as The Atlantis Interceptors and Predators of Atlantis. That's right. So if you can manage to secure yourself a situation like that, one thing that's nice about having uh, certain kinds of niche interests is there's just like a never ending supply. If you're into Italian exploitation cinema, <laughs> there's like a, they made about 2,000 of those every minute. Yeah, you'll never watch them all. Never, never watch them all. Uh, but then here, and here's another thing this is what I'm going to watch tomorrow. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, yeah. Um, Ace Ventura. This is Ace oh, Ventura, the, the Reindeer Hunter. This is an animated oh. uh, special, new animated holiday special from the, the Ace Ventura TV show. And uh, they referenced Jim Carrey on the back, despite the fact that he's not he's not doing the voice. They uh, came out with a new one, like just now. What? No did you did you not see that this is a VHS tape? Oh, a... oh, is this from the Ace Ventura cartoon? Yes, yes. I remember there was an episode of that cartoon where Ace Ventura met the Mask, and it was oh, like this right. big crossover. Event. That's right. And they fought uh, the alien from Alien, who was also played by Jim Carrey. Uh, I. <laughs> Exactly. Did he right. say somebody stop me at some point? Uh, someone, one of them must have. Somebody yes. stop me already then. It's somebody there. stop me already then. Thank you. Uh, the, I'm the cable guy. <laughs> that would have been uh, the full range of uh, Jim Carrey sure. catchphrases. Yeah. You better not be a liar, liar. That's right. Oh, it's uh, me, that Dr. Hedgehog. Robotnik. Can you believe that Jim Carrey's Dr. Robotnik, dude? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I thought he was great. I he did know. a good job. I haven't seen uh, the second And one. the Riddler. The, the great yeah, Jim Carrey oh, yeah. is really. Uh... So speaking of uh, of talented actors uh, portraying world famous engineers, um, I would recommend everybody check out the film uh, A Ferrari uh, by Michael Mann, starring Adam Driver as Enzo Ferrari, the founder of the Ferrari Corporation. Um, I very very much enjoyed that movie. Um, I didn't realize it was out. It comes Ooh. out on Christmas Day. 
Once every couple so, of years, oh, I cool. check to see if if Michael Mann's The Keep three hour cut exists yet, and it still doesn't. Oh, you can you can you can get it. There's ways. Adam uh, Driver looks so good on this poster. Oh man, oh, my uh, God. I'm googling right now. I had a very good time watching it. Um, there's a part where he says, uh, "It's enough to make a De Popa weep." He says at one point, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. "I'm in." I'm in. Uh, That's good. There's 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 too many people out there nitpicking Adam Driver's Italian accent. And I can understand because he did he did play an Italian man in two movies that are, are two long biopic movies about founders of famous Italian brands. He was in House of Gucci. Uh, he wasn't the founder of Gucci in there. He was in, he was in uh, the House of Gucci. He was in The Force Awakens where he played uh, Kylo Ren. Uh, <laughs> Kylo Ren. Kylo Rinaldi. Kylo Ren. <laughs> uh, I use the Force. Uh, I use the force. I use the, the force for the, the sport. A hand of the soul. No, that was but, uh, Jared Leto in uh, House of Gucci. Did you see House of Gucci though? Yes, I did. Jared Jared Leto. I pronounce it Leto because I'm an idiot, uh, and that's just how I, I. I don't know. I don't know, and I don't care. Because uh, where I'm from, we don't care. Uh, we Mama pronounce mia, it. Me no no Darth Vader. Uh, but man, there was a part early in the film. A Ferrari, where uh, so first of all, I think if you can get over the weird Italian accent, it's legit awesome uh, that that Adam Driver has delivered to uh, the guy's great. He's can the go-to Italian this? now. Adam Driver's presence. fantastic in everything that he's ever been in. I didn't see the TV show Girls until 2023, but when I watched it and he shows up, I said to Mimsy, I said, you know. If I'd watched this when it first came out, I would have said that guy's going to be a star. I'm not sure if that was real or not, but I feel like that's how I felt. I'm like, I would have known this guy's good. Anyway, he's real good in this Ferrari thing, which is interesting because he plays like 60-year-old Enzo Ferrari. Um, I thought it was going to be a more wide-sweeping biopic, but it takes place over a, like a two-week period, which uh, I think is the right way to do a movie like this. You pick the most interesting part of a person's life and make a movie about it. Um, uh, it's uh, you know based on real events, uh, but it's Michael Mann. Love Michael Mann. Um, it's uh, not only is it Michael Mann, it's old Michael Mann, and uh, he doesn't fully care. Michael old man, yeah. Michael old man, yeah. So he's now he's Gary's brother now. Yeah. So. He uh he doesn't he does not he it's 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 a Michael Mann that doesn't care so much about making like a big mainstream hit even though that's kind of like how this movie is structured and put together and like how it feels um it just uh it it just like is a very nice uh I wouldn't call it simple it it has complexity but it's straightforward and it's just kind of honest and uh I don't know I really really had a really really good time sitting there Michael Mann's one of my favorite directors. I love The Keep, uh, even though he apparently hates it. I love Thief. I love Heat. Uh, Keep, Thief, Heat. You know, guy knows how to give a game, uh, give a game, give a give a, a, a movie a name. But I also, my, one of my top 10 favorite films of all time is Miami Vice, um, star, uh, starring uh, Colin Farrell and uh, uh, Jamie Foxx. Uh, that's one of my favorite films. Uh, my, uh, Michael Mann's been a big, big boy about Ferraris for a long time, if you've ever seen the Miami Vice TV show. So it's great to see him make a movie about ostensibly about Ferrari, but not not really, but kind of. But uh, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. Um, it it really is a it it very much felt like a they don't make them like they used to kind of movie. It has just been a banner year this year for what I realize now uh, is a bunch of dudes who are going to die while I'm alive. Um, Martin Scorsese, Hayao Miyazaki, Michael Mann, uh, Ridley Scott. Are these dudes, they they all got to make four big, weird passion project personal movies. Uh, big uh, movies tour. by men who will die. <laughs> yeah, by men who by men who are in their eighties. Uh, well, did Spielberg too, right? Spielberg this year. Oh, Spielberg's Spielberg? Fableman was last year. That was last year. Oh. But that that was so. That was also the this yeah. kind of and thing. And George right? Miller's yeah. doing. Uh, he, he's he's, he's been doing his movie next year. Yeah, he's he said he's doing three more. Like you know, yeah, I don't know about that all, Furiosa one, but. Uh, uh, the, it, what you say? You don't know about it? Like it's gonna be it. good. It's gonna it's gonna be good as heck. It's gonna be good as heck. I really think Mia Goth should be playing Furiosa, right? I think we're it's all, just gonna right? be Charlize. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, no, sure, sure. But if you're supposed to, 
I don't know. It's if you're trying. They're to using make a, a lot of CG in that. Just go ahead. If they're get, if they had a de aged. There was other a lot of CG in, in Fury Road as well. Let's let's not talk about trailers ever. Let's uh, trailers. Are, what what are trailers? Like trailers are are, are made by psychos. No, I'm mm-hmm. I'm just saying if you're gonna if you're gonna there was a de aged character in there. If you're gonna de age oh, yeah. someone, oh, might sure, as well sure. de age Charlize as well. Yeah, That's yeah, all. but then you know, I guess they, I guess George Miller doesn't want you to have to look at a de-aged actor for a whole movie. I think the de-aging in uh, that new Indiana Jones, uh, speaking of kind of movies for psychos, um, the de-aging in that was definitely the best I've ever seen. You know, I I watched that and I can't remember if I finished it. I watched part of it at least, but I oh, can't you remember, remember the it. final shot? The final shot was very nice. It was very maybe I cute. didn't finish it then. Yeah, you might not have finished it. The, I was on a plane. Wait, so. wait, hold on, hold on. You would know if you finished that god darn movie, man. Oh, of, all the the god, ending. of all the god darn movies that yeah. you might not remember the ending of, if you don't remember the ending of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, uh, you were you were you were huffing some bus fumes. I probably, I probably or whatever. Just didn't finish it. Like uh, it has one of the most catastrophically, incredibly, amazingly, beautifully stupid uh, uh, ending arcs of like any movie I've ever seen. Uh, it's it's very good. Maybe you I'll would remember. It. You'd remember the ending portion. I'll try to watch the second half. Do Lucy you even James, remember? Do you have anything? I don't <laughs> recommend. Ooh, I. You know, I feel like I feel like you've all probably seen it, but Godzilla minus one. It got mm. extended. The run, black and white versions coming. If you haven't seen that movie? Go see it. It's a great time. You know what? I've heard I a lot think of good I would things. recommend filmmakers. Uh, if you want to make black and white movies, make black and white movies. That's my recommendation for aspiring filmmakers. Don't god darn make a color movie and then make a black and white version of it. It seems to be difficult. Uh, George Miller did the Fury Road Black wise. and Chrome edition, and he had that in mind while shooting it. It oh. was lit for that. Where this Godzilla minus one, there's no way that looks good in black and white. No offense. There's no way it looks uh, like anything other than like turning on the Kurosawa mode uh, uh, filter in uh, Ghost of Tsushima. There's no way that looks... I mean, you know, someone's going to get mad at me for saying this because maybe, maybe you know, maybe the uh, maybe the colorist of that film is listening to this episode of this podcast. But uh, I just feel like there's no way that looks good. Um, are, are, are you besmirching Zack Snyder's Justice League Justice is Gray here? Uh, oh, certainly, certainly. Yes, yeah. yes. There is a black and white version of oh, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Black and white cinematography is Frank's losing it. Right? Is black and white cinematography is a thing that people spent decades perfecting, and some directors went on to see color films and go, "Ah, that's all right. I'm going to stick with black and white." And uh, for guys like Zack Snyder. To just be like, I'm going to release a black and white version where they just drag and drop a, bl- a black and white LUT onto the whole uh, the whole MOV file and say we're done. Uh, yeah. Like it's no, don't do yeah. that, mate. You could don't have do made that. that cut in Adobe Premiere. But Zack Snyder's new movie, Rebel Moon. Do you all know about yeah, this? I know oh. about Rebel Moon. Oh, he, oh, he, boy, wrote a Star War- he wrote a Star Wars movie and they, they didn't want it. Is that the story? And then he's like, yeah. well, I'm yeah. just going to get Netflix's money. It. It is playing right now in 70 millimeter film on one theater in the world, which is the Paris Theater on 59th Street on the east side, Manhattan, okay, yeah. near the near the Plaza Hotel. Yeah. Um, uh, the Paris Theater is a beautiful historic old movie house that Netflix bought a couple years ago, which made a lot of boring people very mad. But they Did do a lot. Did he put his of- digital film on? 70 mil? Oh no, it's 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 about to get way worse, Frank. Are you ready okay. for this? Because uh, as as a person with an interest I don't know that in, I am ready for this. As okay. a person with an interest in the archiving sciences, this will interest you. So, okay. um uh you know that his his cut of the Justice League is in, is in a, a square it's aspect square. ratio. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I, do. Um, I do. I watch that, baby. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah it's, tough. <laughs> it's in a mother box. It's in a square aspect ratio that I looks that, uh, that just looks to uh uh it, it's not like okay, so so many old black and white Hollywood films it, are it's square. The so many of them are are four three or four, three, or, yeah. or square. So many of them are old Hollywood films, uh, Casablanca or whatever, right? Like and, and uh, the there, there's basically a composition that they they kind of established rules of composition over a period of decades, and uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League completely breaks 
Like it's just showing people, uh, you know, tip to tail, you know, head yeah. to toe, uh, full frame. It's like using the square uh, completely wrongly and weirdly. Uh, like uh, Christopher, not not to bang the Christopher Nolan drum, but I watched that Oppenheimer and I've and I've seen uh, Dark Knight Rises in IMAX full mm-hmm. frame. He does it right. You shoot a yeah, guy from like the it. waist up, right? Well, also yeah. there is that scene in in the Last Dark Knight where it is head to toe, and it's like effective. it's awesome for yeah. like two yeah. seconds. Yeah, for like two see, seconds, it's like oh my god, there's two giant action figures. Here. Yeah, you, yeah, and you see yeah. him having a fist fight with Bane, and yeah. they do it. They they like punch into like waist, and it looks like Fight Night Round Three on the yeah. uh, on the PS3, <laughs> and then they they punch out, and it's a full full body, and and it actually sells the superhero thing it for does. about ten seconds. Yep. Whereas Zack Snyder's Justice League doesn't do that uh, at all. Anyway. This Rebel mm-hmm. Moon movie is playing uh, in 70 millimeter film, and it's a square aspect ratio. And the film print for the only 70 millimeter screening run in the world that's happening at this one theater. Again, Netflix bought a hundred year old theater that was in a state of disrepair. Very boring people got angry, but I was able to watch some Terrence Malick films on 35 millimeter with Dolby Atmos sound there. Uh, and they just regularly screen films on film with beautiful sound. And it's a, I think it's a, it's a very nice thing to have in the city. I don't see how they're making the money to, uh, to continue to occupy that incredibly prestigious Fifth Avenue real estate. But I wish them the best. And if it means that every awards season, they have to screen stuff like the maestro wall to wall for two straight weeks. That's fine. As long as I get my weird stuff during yeah. the spring, uh, it's, it's a beautiful place to 50 go. weeks for daddy. Nice front row, 50 weeks for daddy, two weeks for Oscar, uh, uh, or whatever it is, right? But uh, they're screening Rebel Moon. Lord knows why, uh, because that's not going to win any Oscars. But it's on 70 millimeter film, square aspect ratio. And uh, the the punchline here is it's letterboxed and pillar boxed. (laughs) So the the letterboxing and pillar boxing are baked into the the 70 millimeter print and you're watching it on a small square in the middle of the screen i kind of want to go see it oh my god yeah i kind of want to go see it so this okay uh, zach snyder is just so funny to me uh, so well, i don't, I don't like, know if this, this, we, this i don't know complete, if we can hang all this on zach snyder but yeah i think i'm going like to yeah, go ahead go for it go for it because this is the same guy who read watchmen and went the point of this is that rorschach's cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rorschach rules. I he actually is pretty he, cool. I, he is pretty cool, but I also think changing from but it's not the squid, point. Squid, squid monster to Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, that really, from, really misunderstands the whole thing. It yeah, is, but it, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, but the point is that he doesn't get the point. Oh no, absolutely right. not. He does not. The, right. The the, the, the HBO Max uh, series Watchmen tried to undo the ending that uh that uh that Zack Snyder put on there by by bringing the squids back into uh the story but then now it's been deleted from HBO Max. Is uh, that true? I didn't kind know of, that. Kind of Dr. Manhattan style. Uh it's been deleted from it. It's not on Max anymore. They deleted no, it. No, that was a mis- no, it was a mistake that Wait, it was is it? there. Yeah, yeah, it's it still is? there. But Yeah, it's still there. Are they deleting it soon? I don't know. Uh, I shout think out it, to Yeah, no, to I think Lucy James is right. It was removed by mistake. Tam got it for me on blu-ray just in case and then he was like yeah they didn't actually delete it but hi, here have some bonus features i i haven't seen it because i'm afraid alan moore will put a curse on me if i do uh, it's but all it's right really, hey i mean jeffy hey, right? jeffy i read alan moore's book you're allowed to do god darn anything you want with regard to that man like yeah, no yeah. offense you're you know, allowed yeah. to do it i read his book dude you uh, read jerusalem and and he says in there at least six or seven he at least 700 times he says doesn't matter what you think oh. about me, man. It's okay. He All basically right. says it. He says you can you can watch Watchmen. He ba- he 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 basically says it. He says watch Watchmen the movie adaptation as many times as you want. It's fine. Zack Snyder's all right. He basically says it thousands should, of times in that book. You should watch the TV show just for the the Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross uh, soundtrack. It's yeah, very good. Uh, the the TV yeah. show was actually it was it was pretty good. Um, it is it, was, it I, is I, bare I minimum word, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it is. Uh, it is almost zero recognizable characters, et cetera, et cetera. It's uh, it's new stuff. It's all new stuff. It's good. It's good. It's uh, okay. 
I I think we can wrap it up there. Uh, this is where I do my outro. <laughs> Just a little quick uh, episode we did. Yeah, why yeah. not? Go for L- it. Who little, cares? little Christmas treat for you. Christmas all. treat, yeah. A Ferrari. Oh, wait, I forgot to say my favorite part of Ferrari. There's a scene early in Ferrari where they're having lunch at Ferrari's uh, Ferrari factory, and the camera's coming in, and you see a man in a beautiful suit. Uh, he's a sitting at a table, and he's eating a ravioli. And I was like, a mamma mia. A and the camera pans a little to the left. One second later, there's a big old giant bowl full of some alio e olio spaghetti. And I was like, a mamma mia. And then not 18 frames later, the camera has moved even further to the left. And there's a big old a plate of a, a god darn a penny pesto. And I was like, a mamma mia. And I've been hungering for pasta ever since. Frank, thank you for just sitting through all of this. <laughs> I was like a mamma mia. Oh. Am I supposed to be offended because I'm technically Italian? <laughs> I think that's it, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you know, we're all technically I, I, something. I, I haven't written a book yet, but pretend that I wrote a book that says it's all right. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm part of the Frank, when yeah. you see Penny Pesto on the screen uh-huh. in, in, a, in a film theater, do you not think... Uh, mama mia like that i i, I, I enunciated it I yeah, right see? Out. yeah yeah right in like in I, the I, mario I, voice i can't uh, even like I'm on the me. Yeah. yeah like that <laughs> yeah it looked so good <laughs> lucy james thank you so much for joining us this week thank uh, you we, for we gotta me. have you on again next year and yeah soon. absolutely uh if you listening to this right now enjoyed this episode of insert credit or any other please rate and review our show wherever however you can you can also support us on patreon.com slash insert credit to pay me and our editor and basically not tim tim's not involved he doesn't get paid for this this is not get paid for this oh Uh, i i actually got asked twice this week if it's a joke when i say i don't get paid no Uh, serious he actually which is it's 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 really uh it's really not a joke. It's really not a joke. Uh, yeah, no, like it's serious. We could, yeah, <laughs> we could show you the base stubs, but we, yeah, won't. well, because um, I've, I've gone on the record in many, many places saying don't work for free to people, offering that advice to youngsters. So th- th- some youngsters have called me out on working for free here. So uh, they've called me out on it. Um, so it's an ethical quandary. I mean, I I appreciate having you here. Uh, I know that I, I know it, it's kind of a darned if you do, darned if you don't situation. Exactly. Uh, uh, like both ways, you're going to have people yelling at you. So oh, you, yeah, you just kind of have to make a choice. Oh, they, they, they like to yell. Yeah. I mean, the other option is to not do the show at all, but that would make me very sad. Uh, and getting so, sad is no fun. Yeah. Anyway, if you'd like to sponsor our show with an advertisement that doesn't give any money to Tim. Uh, but it does <laughs> help with my rent and stuff and also our editor. And, you know, some of that goes to Frank and Frank needs yeah, stuff. I get a little, little piece. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what Brandon Steele is, but I don't ask. Uh, That's right. <laughs> uh, but uh, please, you could just contact us at show at insertcredit.com and we'll work something out for an advertisement or something. You could join our community at forums.insertcredit.com or find videos of these episodes on youtube.com slash insertcreditshow. Uh, one thing you can do for Brandon is wishlist Demon School on Steam. That one's yeah. going to be hot. And go over to the Video Game History Foundation website. There's cool stuff happening there. This episode is edited by Esper Quinn with original music by Kurt Feldman. I'm Alex Jaffe. I'm Frank Cifaldi. I'm Tim Rogers. I'm Brandon Sheffield. And I'm Lucy James. And have yourself a merry little squishmas. I don't want to actually. You don't have to. That wasn't for yeah. you. What am I going to do on Christmas? Is the question. Am I going to watch? I'm going to listen to the answer credit show. <laughs> oh yeah, right. put it on. <laughs>